we are in the kitchen and Jamie's going to cook for me for dinner tonight. And he goes, do you want to film what I'm cooking? And I said, yes, people will love to see you cook. He doesn't wear aprons when he cooks though. And anyway, it's called chicken homemade nuggets, chicken tenders. I chicken. call my chicken tenders. And he has, he has experimented and experimented. And he has found the best breading and how to make it stick on the meat and how to cook it perfect. So he's gonna show us. And the grandkids will beg for this every time they come. They want grandpa's chicken tenders. And they don't even use a dipping sauce when he makes them because they love it so much. And Credence, he will eat so many. And then he says, I'm so full, but they taste so good. I just keep eating more. I think I do that too. Maybe, do you do that too? No. Tastes so good, we just keep eating more. They talk about people's weight problems and, they, oh, we're eating for out of emotion. We're eating because we're depressed. All the reasons. No, they never say, I'm eating because the recipe was so good and it tastes so good and I have good recipes. That's why we eat. I mean, anyway, that's why I eat because it tastes so good. All right. If it doesn't taste good, I don't eat it. I don't want to waste calories on something that doesn't taste good. He does, though. He eats everything. His mother taught him to slick his plate up. Good. Hurry, his famous saying is, hurry up and eat it. It's going bad. Doesn't that sound delicious? <laughs> it's a big turnoff. I said, don't tell people that. They don't even want to eat it. Then it's like, has it turned already? So... Anyway, and some people say that I talk and interrupt him. I do. It is true. I do that. That's our makeup of art. But it's because he doesn't stay on track. And sometimes he doesn't hear my aunt, my question. I'm asking him. He's talking. Get back to the answer of the question. Isn't that right? Well, normally I just ignore the questions and go on. And then it makes her mad. So she has to interrupt me. Because Dr. Phil... Dr. Phil always said, I used to watch that faithfully, I don't watch him anymore, but he used to say that people do not listen to the question because they're thinking about what they're going to say, or they're not, thinking, they're not even listening to your, you know. Well, I think I just ignore him. Uh, anyway, should we start here? So he's going to start. Yes, he is. Okay, first of all, I'm going to uh, tell how I make the breading to put on the chicken and I don't know in one of Angela's previous uh, videos she mentioned how we use chicken bouillon all the time on lots of stuff we well, just use a empty shaker uh, that's a little dirty on top stop showing them just hold it straight so they don't see it's not dirty it's just it looks a little dirty it's just a chicken bouillon on it anyway we we, uh, she buys this chicken bouillon in these big okay. gallon. The, if you mix this up, it'll make 75 gallons of chicken broth. And then we. And wait, I'm not, I don't mean to interrupt, but I want to tell them you can buy it on Amazon. And I looked at the price for each serving or whatever it was. And this was the most economical one. And it's a good brand, nor. Is a good brand, free shipping, and I bought two of them. Then I look at the expiration date, and oh, so I've been giving it away to people because we have two of them, and it's going to expire before we well, ever use it all. It doesn't really go bad. It basically hardens up and gets oh. chunky, and you got to remash it and all that stuff. Well, what do you think if we, when we have the family reunion, we just make chicken broth for them? Because it'll make 75 gallons. And we'll just tell well, them. We're does. having chicken broth for lunch. <laughs> anyway, when, you're ha when you have... He doesn't laugh at my jokes sometimes. When you have, like, your different seasoning shakers and stuff, here's an Italian seasoning. And anyway, we have dozens of them. And when they get empty, then I use those to put my chicken bouillon in. And I, we just load the chicken bouillon with a spoon. And what about this? Do you recognize what these well, are? Let me tell about those. And then, I'm gonna get the lid to go back on. So we're, so we're done with that. So anyway, that's how we get the chicken bouillon. And I suppose you could actually put a few spoonfuls of chicken bouillon into your 
uh, breading that you're coating the, the chicken with. And then I grow my own herbs. And this is some of the parsley that I grew two or three years ago. I usually only grow parsley about every five years. And then I'll get two or three or four bags uh, and I dry it and crush it tell, up. Tell them how you dry it. I just lay it out on a cookie sheet and let it set for a long time. Because we live in really dry climate. You couldn't do that in Brookings. Well, by the coast. Care. By the coast, it never would dry. But you can buy a dehydrator to dry anyway, it. Anyway, we've gone through about three bags. And this is my last bag of, of uh, parsley. And, I, and then, let's see, I think this one's parsley too. And then this is... I usually don't grow, I grow basil about every three years, and I usually only get two or three of these. Sorry, basil. okay, just a minute. I'm gonna clean this screen right here because I think it looks dirty. So just a minute, okay, that's better. All right. And you can use this kind, you don't have to put this into your breading, and, uh, but it's something that you can add a little bit of it into the breading if you want to. Well, I don't think parsley has much flavor. No, it's, I don't know what it does. Basil does, but parsley doesn't. And then one of the ingredients is breadcrumbs. This one is just a, oh, this one here is just a standard breadcrumb that's kind of a powdery. Some breadcrumbs are a little bit chunky and some are powder. This one's more powdery. And then I noticed we had this Italian bread crumb. And I've noticed... The, oh, they have green. I noticed they've got a little bit of the parsley and basil and stuff mixed into this bread crumb here. Because it's Italian. Because of, the, because of being Italian. But none of that really matters. You, uh, this bread coating stuff, you can kind of just put a lot of different things in, whatever you want or whatever you have and then when I go to the store I buy these uh, dip uh, dipping mixes like this is a Dixie Fry you can see how golden and dark or light orange it is there's some of these fries that have got a lot of flour in them and they're real light and pale cream colored and then you get some of them that have this uh, darker almost orange tint to it. And I kind of like, I think I used two of these uh, boxes to one of the boxes that's more, uh, more flower and lighter colored. I don't like using just the straight lighter colored ones because they're kind of like the same thing as just rolling in the flour. And uh, I like to have the other seasonings that are in these and then the other the main ingredient is probably cornflake crumbs and i don't happen to have any of those so i'm going to use these you have to um, pretend like these are corn crate uh but what is that i think it's more of this it was mixed oh, up oh yeah okay. anyway you can get it comes in a bigger box but you can get uh cornflake crumbs and it has more of an orangey flavor or coloring too. Or could you buy cornflakes and mush them all up to crumbs? So when I make my dip, I usually use, I guess you can mash Thank them you. up if you want to do all that nonsense. <laughs> I was just pointing out you didn't even answer, address my question. Well, I like to ignore those stupid questions. <laughs> When you're, talk, you're teaching, you got to tell things, everything. <laughs> Some women like to completely do from scratch. They don't want to buy a box of stuff. They want to, you know. So, so if I was making up a batch of this uh, dip, I would probably use two boxes of this Dixie Fry and one box of the, of the one with a lot of powder in it. It's probably tempura or something. Or the floury stuff. I'd probably add a little bit of this stuff. And then I'd probably use one can of the cornflake crumbs. Well, those are breadcrumbs. You use breadcrumbs in it? Well, I meant one box, one of the bigger boxes of the cornflake crumbs, and then I'd use one of these breadcrumbs of the breadcrumbs. So you use a combination of breadcrumbs, 
cornflake, Dixie mix, and Dixie mix. Three things. And things like basil and parsley. You're and seasoning them. Like I said, you might even try putting a spoonful or two of of this uh, chicken bouillon into it. But that's basically how this. Uh, and like I said, this is the extra that didn't fit in here. Now it's getting down to where I can start putting this into here. Uh, you probably make at least a good gallon. If you had a big gallon like this to store it in, you could probably, by the time you had all these boxes together, you got about a gallon's worth that you're making. But it, it lasts me about a year before I have to make up another batch. And... Okay, now we're gonna show how we do it. And the breadcrumbs in this one were a lot bigger and chunkier, I can see. But I just take and, now you gotta come over here and film. I just take and dump a bunch into a dish. And I have my favorite big meat knife. And it use, usually one breast one piece of breast meat will feed Angela and me. I'm trying to find this camera in a good place. I guess I have, to, I have these pots hanging here. Why don't you come over a little bit? Because the pot's in front of your head. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. I Wait. can do it. I can do it all right here. Because you're not, you're not hanging a disco ball and have a disco ball in front of your face. But anyway, when you get your breasts. A lot of times they have a chunk of fat hanging on them like this. We I know just, how breasts have that. Just cut the... I, sometimes I save this to feed the magpies. But I don't know if I will. Well, I don't think they do. They wouldn't do that. Probably they don't have magpies to feed. And we just buy the chicken in packages of three, four breasts or whatever. And, I, and like I said, it only takes one breast for each supper meal. And because what, he cuts it like this. And what I do is I just start cutting it into about half inch slices. And you put it into the... Do you have the oil? I'll get to that later. I know, but you have, you know, you, you have chicken on your fingers, dead chicken. And then now you have dead chicken on the No, I only oil. have chicken on this hand. The dead chicken? What about when you sliced it? Okay, you can't... I was holding the knife. I wasn't All right. slicing you the don't chicken. Be careful. You don't want to cross and contaminate. We learned that. I'm good at contaminating. We never died yet, but he's... Not, I'm always leery. I have to watch... I'm getting me. so super shaky. i getting shaky in my old age. Anyway, it takes quite a bit of oil in your pan. So... Uh, do you always use olive oil or do you use I, any other kind? I pretty butter. much... Have you tried butter? I use butter sometimes. But anyway, if you take and rub the spoon and mash the breading down into the meat, and when you take it out, don't try to shake it off too much and put it in. Anyway, so that's how we cut it up into the little pieces and bread them. Okay. I'll stop it now, and then we'll, when he gets the pan full, I will film it when it's cooking. Okay, let me say one more thing. Sure. When you use one breast like this, it takes this 11-inch pan, just fills it exactly. Okay. So when I'm cooking for the grandkids and all, we have babysitting kids and stuff that come over to play with the grandkids. So when I'm feeding six or seven of them, I usually have to have two panfuls. And then sometimes I get carried away feeding them one pan while I burn the other one. So you have to really watch. You cook it slow, low heat? No, I cook it fast. All right. I don't do anything slow. Uh, well. I try not to. <laughs> Do you want me to, you want to talk or do you want me to keep, uh, stop it? Well, let, let me just uh, film while I do this here. Okay. It usually doesn't take too long to go through this. And hopefully if I can do this so I don't burn it. But your oil isn't spread all in the pan everywhere. Uh, it'll all spread itself out okay. 
You don't heat the oil first on the uh, stove? Sometimes I have the pan warmed up a little. Okay. I, it might make it easier and faster here to show Some that. of the rules we've learned don't apply. And see, some of the reason we call them kind of chicken strips because eventually they get down to be kind of just strips. Like you get in McDonald's. Well, or you could cut them in nuggets if you wanted little nuggets for your kids too. But Jamie and I are old enough, we can handle a strip, a larger strip chicken. So you don't dip it in egg, he doesn't dip it in milk, nothing like that. Have you tried dipping it in wetness, Seth? No, we've tried all that junk in the past. And it just comes off, right? When you fry it, it would come off. Well, there's some of those coatings that, they're kind of like Bisquick mix that. Oh, more flour. That kind of swell up like a batter on the. Because they have baking soda in them, baking powder. And then when I'm done with this, we just. He crosses and contaminates again. Now, the chicken sticks to everything that it touches. I know, but I, I know that other people are going to be like me and think that that's bad well, to do that. If you were cooking in a restaurant and stuff, you wouldn't do it. But I tell him and preach, but he... You think I care? No, he no. doesn't care. And we never died or got sick yet, so this anyway, is how he does it. Any of this stuff got him washed up now. Okay, so then when you're done, you're back to having them in. We'll go to the stove now, and I had the burner on, so it heat up fast. Sometimes after you put the chicken in, it kind of... The breading soaks up a lot of your oil. Sometimes you have to add a little more oil. Would butter make it have a better flavor though? If you put half and half, half butter. I half. don't know. I like cooking with olive oil about as good as butter. If you watch the old Julia Roberts' shows, she'd swear up and down that butter was the... Now this towel, you just cross-contaminated with the towel. Would you fix the camera so that we're... I am, it's perfect. It's right on your chicken, showing your chicken. Oh good, he's washing his hands, that's good. I'm gonna take these to the dirty clothes. Okay, that's good. Let me take this. There's a clean towel for you. And I always tell him to have his damp rag here to wipe when it starts spitting. He doesn't do my, that. Really my biggest good. problem is I get doing too many trying to cook too many things and then I end up burning one of them or something. So I have a hard time. Don't get this too close to the hot part. Look, I already did. Look. I know, that's what I do too. No, look Sometimes. right here. This one's burned and burned because I got too close wiping. And then a lot of times, if you just take the pan off and then you try to wipe the stove when the it's too hot. too hot and you burn your towel. I guess we've both done that. Yeah. What do you use to turn them over now? And then, uh, let's see, where's that other lid? I washed it. This is the lid. This lid's from my other pan, but I think it works on this one. Almost, anyway. Good enough. Good enough. So you put the lid on. And see, I've got this on high, so you got to watch it real. Oh, let's see. We're missing the stage here. What would it be? You don't use pepper? If people like pepper, you could put pepper. Well, I don't use pepper on this. But if, I were to use, if I were to use pepper, I'd put a little bit into the... But I have to... The bullion really sticks in. You gotta, you gotta make sure everything gets some bullion on it. The bullion's what makes the kids love it so much. The he doesn't use salt, separate salt. No, this is the only salt you use. It's starting to get brown down there on the bottom. I know, that's because I really need to put it on eight instead of high here. Okay. Let's see, I need to have a... That's what you're turning with? I have a bigger one. My favorite spatulas are these little ones that I can flip the eggs. Is it your favorite color, too? I have two of them. I have a blue one and a... This one's a better one. 
wash it. Now, do you like, is your favorite color pink? I don't care about the color. Okay. Oh. Okay, these are just about done. See, they don't take very long to cook. And then I found that I use, we have these plates that just are the perfect size to fit in the pan, and then I just turn the whole batch. Oh, show them. Wait, show them how lovely and brown that is. And that's why they're easy to burn, because if you leave these just a minute or two too long... Well, shouldn't you, like, use a napkin? No, you got it? a gob there that fell off. It's... No, but on your... I know, but in that pan. You don't want those burn bits in there, do you? No, know that's there? that brown stuff. It's good. And then, then you can turn the whole batch that way. Do you ever put more oil in there? And then you have to make sure you get the other side. The other side coated with your But do you ever put more oil in? Oh once in a while. Hmm. If I don't cook it too hot, which I am a little too hot. Now, the whole thing is you got to make sure you time it so that you don't get it uh, burned, but done. burned. But you got to get it done. They're always done perfectly. They're always done perfectly, but sometimes they get them burned around the edges if I'm not careful. Well, I think, it, and not all of them, right? You see, they shouldn't stick to the pan if they, they get stuck. They need to be. You shake them like this and they all move and you know you're not sticking. Do you use that plate method on your fried potatoes too? Uh, yeah. I thought you did. I use the plate to turn stuff so I can get the whole pan full turn. And then I'm just checking these. See, these are already getting brown. And as soon as they post up just a little bit more... You then, put the lid on there? Uh, it doesn't need to. Okay. Sometimes if you're trying to get the breading that's stuck around in the pan stick to the chicken, it, you can kind of slide it around and get that breading to... And then show your carrots. He has his cooked no, carrots. No, my carrots. Are... He cooks carrots to go with it. For dinner. Okay, I'm going to turn the heat off now because I think we're just about oh, done. Are you stuck in the stove? You're not supposed well, to slide on that. You know, I'm lifted up a little and sliding. Okay, so when I cook dinner for, for us, see, these are getting plenty done on this side too. And anyway, And then normally I will I'll use this little pan to warm up some green beans. Oh, I would just use that same pan. Well, we could. And I like to put Parmesan cheese on my green beans. But normally when I get her, her supper, I'll have the green beans and the chicken. And like I said, one breast feeds us for a supper. So I have a question. Do you call it supper or dinner? Dinner, supper, whatever it is. He calls it supper, and he calls lunch dinner. I call dinner is at Okay, night. now, in Christ's last supper, supper they didn't tell he, you what did, time he didn't was. go to dinner. He went to supper. But what time was that? It was in the evening. No, maybe it was at lunch. Nah. <laughs> we don't know. In the olden days, they called it supper more than they do dinner like they do today. I anyway, think you could tell how old the parents are. By how the term they use. Anyway, this this is a perfect look of my fried chicken tenders. Okay. All right. Maybe you'll try it. You'll like it.